Hi everyone, this is Mike Schwartz from Glue, and today I wanted to provide a quick overview of how to use OxD to OpenID Connect enable your web application. So let's start with a quick overview of two different approaches you could use to do that. One, one approach is that you could install some type of filter in a web server to make sure that the person is authenticated via OpenID Connect before they hit your application. This is a common approach for SAML and OpenID Connect and even some older web access management platforms that use either a web agent or a proxy um, to make sure that the person's authenticated and so the application knows that by the time it sees the request, the person's been authenticated and usually picks up the information about the person in the HTTP headers that are populated by the web filter. So there's been a newer approach recently where web developers would rather just call the APIs for the identity layer directly from within their application. And this provides the application developers a chance to build a nicer user experience by having a more direct integration with identity. And so this leads us to why we wrote OxD, which was to enable developers to use this um, first approach, um, but to, um, to automate handling some of the security and to make the, the whole developer experience easier, to, pro to provide easier, more developer-friendly APIs um, to, to enable this integration. So uh, if we look at OxD, OxD is really middleware. It's not, it's not a proxy, it's really a helper application. Uh, OxD provides APIs um, that are, um, that basically call the OpenID Connect APIs or help the developer call the API, OpenID Connect APIs. And we've written um, libraries in native um, platforms like Python, Java, PHP, Node, Ruby, C Sharp, and we're adding Perl and Go, as well as some, some plugins for uh, popular open source platforms like WordPress and Drupal, um, shopping cart applications, um, Sweet CRM, and also some frameworks like Java Spring, um, Ruby on Rails, Python Flask, Node Express. Um, so, um, so OxD basically reduces OpenID Connect um, to five different APIs. Um, those APIs are register. That's where the OpenID Connect provider um, tells the, or that's where the relying party tells the OpenID Connect provider um, what URL to send the user to after authentication. Then um, the second API, um, it's called get authorization URL, but basically it helps the application developer redirect the person or the subject to the OpenID provider. The third API is get the tokens. Um, when the user comes back from the OP with a code, um, the app, you can get the tokens, the access token, the refresh token, and the ID token. And then um, after you have the access token, you can get user info, and then eventually you'll, you'll want to log out. So these are the these are the five APIs. Um, not too bad. Um, you know, you can think of OpenID Connect really as this three-step process. You know, you get the code, you get the tokens, you get the user info. So let's take a closer look at the at the APIs offered by OxD. So the first API I mentioned is register, and register only has one required parameter. Let me make this bigger. So register um, requires that you tell the OpenID provider your redirect URI. Um, it's a security rule that the OpenID provider will only send the, the person back to a redirect URI for a client that's been previously registered. So registration just happens once. So after, after you register the app, then you get into this three-step process. So step, in step one, you get the authorization URL. So to call the API, um, you basically just call get authorization URL, provide your ID, um, and you get back a response um, that includes this long, um, complicated 
OpenID Connect your, um, re URL. And you just sort of take that and send the user to this thing. And you'll get back a response. And that response will include the code um, and the state. Um, the state is used, um, basically the client sends a state and if it receives a response from with a, for a state that it never sent, then it just, it just throws the, the response away. It's a way to prevent some malicious app from calling your, um, your redirect URI. Um, so after, um, so you got back your code and your state. So you say get tokens by code. You give the code and the state. And then you get back a response that includes the access token, the refresh token, the ID token, and then OxD um, converts the ID token into a, um, a JSON object for you. So great, now you have the access token and you can take the access token and get user info and provide that access token and get back a response that tells you, okay, who is this person? What are their claims? And then when you're done, you can get the logout URI. Um, this is also um, where you get to this URI and you redirect the person to this URI. So, um, so I wrote a little sample application called the World's Simplest Web App. Um, this is a CGI script. I thought it would be easier to follow a CGI than to use a framework. Um, the code for this demo that I'm gonna show you is, is checked into GitHub. So if you go to Glue Federation, um, OxD Python, um, there's a, a folder called Demo CGI, and all of this code is in there. So um, the application is um, is set up. Um, let me give you a quick overview of that. So um, OxD is distributed as a package, so it runs as a Unix service. So after you install OxD, you'll see that um, OxD gets installed in in opt OxD server. And there's a folder called conf, and you'll need to configure um, some of the, the configuration. So um, the first thing you'll need to configure is um, oxd.conf, and you'll need to set the port. This is the socket that oxd is going to listen on. Um, you'll also need to set the, the license information um, for your server. And then um, after you've configured that, um, then you'll need to configure what we call the default site settings. Um, the main, um, you can accept the default values, but the one thing that you'll want to set for sure is which OpenID provider are you authenticating against? So that's that's sort of the required parameter here. Um, so now let me um, show my, uh, my CGI bin um, application, um, which is in um, user lib CGI bin. Okay, so um, so I showed this home page, and um, the home page um, basically looks for a session. If it doesn't, if it finds a session, it it prints who this person is. If it doesn't find a session, then it prints the um, the login link. Um, so um, if I look at the um, login link, I'll notice that it's calling CGI bin slash redirect to login dot CGI. So let's let's start by taking a look at at this page. Um, so um, I mentioned that um, in the first step of OxD, what we're going to do is um, get the authorization URL. Um, the OxD client actually takes care. The Python client takes care of registration for you, so there's nothing to do here. If the Oxy client um, doesn't see any previous registration, it'll just automatically register. Um, the um, um, I should mention that um, so Oxy um, Python um, has its own configuration file. Um, so in that file, we set the registration information. So I gave the the client a name, um, the redirect URI, um, as I mentioned, is required. And then because I'm also doing logout, I had to register the logout URI and I gave a contact. And the OxD Python client needs to know that the OxD server is running on port um, on this port, 8099. 8, so um, going back to my, my redirect to login page, 
Um, so when the user hits login, basically I'll instantiate my client, um, give the config file. Um, I will um, um, then get the authorization URL. Um, and then all I do is use this location um, redirect to send the person to the, to the, um, the authorization endpoint. So pretty simple. That's step one. Um, now, um, after the person gets redirected to the authentication URL, they will um, be asked to authenticate. And then after, if they authenticate successfully, they'll get sent to the callback, um, the redirect URI. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, so um, what happens here is that, um, so we instantiate our client again, and then we get the state and the code back in the response. So this is Python's way of just grabbing the state and the code. And then we're ready to do step two, which is get the tokens and we give the code and the state. And then um, once we have the tokens, we can get the access token. And then once we have the access token, we can get the user info. And then um, in my little program, um, what I do is I get the subject, which is like the user identifier um, from the um, from the user info, and I write that into the session. I create a little database and store it. Um, and then um, at the end, I should say, um, after I've processed my, um, um, I write a cookie. Um, the cookie just writes the session ID that I generated. I generate a random session ID. This is the application session ID. And I write that as a cookie. Um, and um, then I basically just redirect back to the home page. Um, so let's see, take a look at what this looks like. So keep in mind um, that I have no um, client registered yet. Um, I can see that um, in, the, in the comp directory, there's nothing here. So when I hit login for the first time, OxD is going to register. And then it's going to redirect me for authentication. So, okay, it registered, and now it redirect. It's asking me for authentication. Um, I need to put in my username and password. And now it's asking me to insert my YubiKey because I have YubiKey set up on this glue server. So let me hit the YubiKey button. Now it's asking me to authorize. Um, it's saying um, this application wants your profile information and your email address and your subject. And I'll say OK. And now I'm back at the home page. So it, it sent me back to the callback, which then processed it and sent me back to the home CGI. It was too fast to see it. Um, but basically, the this very exciting web page then prints the subject identifier. And now it prints the logout URL. And because it knows that I'm logged in, so it says, now you might want to log out. So um, before I do that log out, let me just show a couple of things. Um, the first is, is that if I do an ls in the opt oxd server conf directory, I'll see that there's this new file here. And what this contains is the um, client information specific um, for the, uh, this client. So um, basically, um, it, it, it's it stores um, preference information for this client. So um, that basically information that came back um, during registration, um, dynamic registration. Um, what else can I show? I can also show, so if I go to the glue server itself, um, I can show you that the client got registered. Um, so let's go to OpenID Connect and Clients and um, Here's my world simplest web app client. Um, and I can um, show that this is the client ID. And um, I can see basically how it got registered. It's using authorization code flow, so response type code. Um, OK, so that's, um, um, let's go back to our app. Um, and now let's try and log out. So I'll hit the log out button. 
I log out and says basically I logged out. So let me go over how that happened. So when I called um, the logout script, um, let me go back here. Now let's go to the CGI bin. And so that when I the logout um, button um, basically sent me to this redirect to logout.cgi script. Um, so this is also a very simple script. Um, I instantiate the client. Um, I get the logout URI. Um, and then I just send the person to that logout URI, and that's it. Um, so what happens is is that um, the OpenID Connect provider, when it when it sees the end session request, um, it then sends um, um, generates a, a page, which it sends to the browser, and that page contains um, iframes um, that call the logout URI for every application that your client is associated with, basically your, your browser is associated with. So what ends up happening is, is that your browser calls this um, logout um, CGI. So what this does is it looks for that application session that we set and it deletes it. Because um, remember, there's a, an OP, OpenID provider session, and there's an, a local application session. So in this case, we're saying I need to clear the session for this um, um, for this um, for this you know local um, session that I have. So that's what it does. Um, and then after that, um, you end up going to to the logout confirmation page. So we can just show yeah, yes, you actually um, were logged out, and um, and that just um, it chat looks for the for the um, session and make sure that it's not there. Um, anyway, hopefully that that gives you an overview um, of the um, of of the Glue Server um, um, OXD um, application integration. And um, if you have any questions, um, take a look at the website oxd.glue.org. And um, if you run into any issues, um, um, feel free to post on the support site, support.glue.org. So thank you for listening.